Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Cliff Sargent. Happy New Year. Great to see you as always. Hope you found some time to relax and read during the holidays. Many of you probably have busy lives and don't have the time to read all of the books that I review. So, in the interest of getting the most out of the time that you do have, here are my top five books that I reviewed in 2018. I'm just going to get right into it. Number five, The Invention of Morel by Adolfo Bioy Casares an Argentine author who was friends with Jorge Luis Borges. He published this when he was 26. This fugitive escapes to this seemingly abandoned island, and suddenly all of these people just materialize. They just show up out of nowhere. And he finds this beautiful woman, and he, he falls in love with her. And he discovers that she's part of a strange, ultra-sophisticated photographic or cinematic recording of this week's events that took place back in time, and is being replayed by this machine uh, that is controlled by the tides. So it's like this, this not, not like a, a hologram, but this, um, it's almost as, a, as if it's like a three-dimensional film that's being replayed for eternity because this machine that's projecting it is controlled by the tides. So it's so realistic that at first he thinks they're all real, but they don't, you know, none of the people on the island are responding to him. So he's completely confused for a while, and then he discovers, ah, this is what it is. It's actually a, a, a recording. It's a slow burn, a dreamlike sort of ghost story that once you wrap your head around what's going on is thought provoking, tragic, and beautiful, really unlike anything else. What part of you lives on inside a photograph or film recording? Is part of your soul inside there? What is the essence of someone and can it be recorded? How much of you dies and how much lives on? What happens if one were to fall in love with a ghost? And not just a ghost, but worse, an image. Number four, Siddhartha by Hermann Hesse. A German-Swiss author, suffered from depression and was helped by Carl Jung. Siddhartha is a story about a man's quest for enlightenment during the time of the Buddha. The novel's influences include Indian and Chinese philosophy as well as Nietzsche, so it all blends together into this fantastic tale. Siddhartha is the name of an Indian Brahmin who decides to leave his wealthy home and seek enlightenment. He has a chance to learn from the actual Buddha since it takes place in the same historical time period, but he chooses to go his own way. It's about the discovery that wisdom cannot be taught. Experience is the teacher, and experience is experienced alone. In part, it's about giving up the need for instruction and having the courage to figure things out for yourself. It's also about the idea that there are no isolated stages of life, whether positive or negative, in the process of seeking enlightenment, which he discovers is not external, but internal. Better than food. So good. Number three, The Book of Monel, written by the French author Marcel Schwab. Schwab is an obscure but highly influential author. He, uh, he was friends with Aleister Crowley and uh, Oscar Wilde, and he influenced Jorge Luis Borges, and I mean, he's, he's a hell of a character, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a crime that he's not better known. The Book of Manel is difficult to summarize. It's another blend of influence. It's like the Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen style fairy tales mixed with Nietzschean philosophy and aphorisms and dark, somber imagery all about the idea of loss, about the death of people we love. This was the result of Marcel Schwab writing this as he watched a woman he loved, named Louise, die from tuberculosis. The stories were originally created out of happiness, I think for her, but then she got sick and the book turned into a literary expression of a truly devastating experience. For me, it was a unique and important reminder to celebrate love while there's still time because I'm very sorry to say that it won't always be there, and you never know when you're gonna lose it. Number two, Equus by Peter Schaffer. One strange tale about a boy and his horse, God. A boy who works at a stable named Alan Strang suddenly blinds six horses with a spike, out of nowhere, all at once. Martin Dysart, his psychiatrist, is attempting to figure out what's wrong with him. He discovers the boy has a private, religious, erotic relationship with a personal God, named Equus, who looks like a horse. His own life lacking substance and passion, religious or erotic, Dysart eventually becomes envious of the boy's relationship with his god. A psychiatrist becomes envious of his patient's madness. In treating him, Dysart realizes he'll be suppressing a pure form of ecstatic pagan worship. This true religious spirit, He'll be eradicating an authentic part of what it means to be human in this boy, sacrificing him to the dull, insipid gods of normality or modernity or whatever. Is that the right thing to do, is the question. It's a haunting story. So good. Love that book, love that play. And finally, number one, another Argentine author, Cesar Ayra, with 
an episode in the life of a landscape painter. Cesar Ayra is a, a, I don't even know what to say about him. He's a true gem. He's written a lot of books. Many of them are short, but he has written a lot, lot of books. This was the first one of his that I read and it was phenomenal. I loved the tone. I loved the simplicity of the linear narrative, but the complexity of, you know, what it meant. It's a fictional account of a real German landscape painter named Johann Moritz Rugendas, traveling across Argentina seeking to capture in his art what Alexander von Humboldt, another real character, who is, is treated fict fictitiously, the fellow who recommended that he go to Argentina, calls the physiognomic totality. It seems like within each painting, Rugendas is trying to capture the full essence of the environment. Then he's struck by lightning twice, and then dragged by his horse. And subsequently his life, his art, and his style changes. And even though he's deformed and in an excruciating pain, he keeps going. Despite this horrific accident, he still seeks to capture this in his art. He, he, he seeks to continue searching for this, this physiognomic totality, whatever you want to call it, this, this ability to capture the essence of the landscapes in his paintings. Um, he works with what he has. I thought it was an impressively economical story about the deep, deep yearning to create no matter what life throws at you, no matter what shit gets dealt to you. Never giving up while you can still breathe. There was this quiet intensity to it. The descriptions of the landscape were beautiful. I mean, really, something else. I loved that book. Ira is able to do so much with so little. What is it about the Argentinians? They have the best writers, I'm telling you. Cesar Ira, an episode in the life of a landscape painter. That was my favorite book of 2018. If you would like to leave your favorite books of 2018 in the comment section below, I'm sure many people would appreciate it, uh, myself certainly. Time for the coffee lottery. And for this coffee lottery, uh, the winner can have any of the books that I listed in this video. So they will be sent one of those books of their choice and a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. So for those of you who are new, the coffee lottery is where I take all the names of the patrons on Patreon who donate $5 or more per video, and I place their names in this mason jar. I pull out a name for each review I do, and I send them a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee I roast myself. The coffee is is delicious. If you would like to get in on that, you can go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food and donate $5 or more per video. That will get you in the coffee lottery. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you to all the patrons who have supported the show. You're making all of this possible. One more year down, keeps growing and growing. Couldn't do it without you. Really appreciate it. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you and happy new year. All right, here we go. Hey, Bojan. Cool. Thanks a bunch, Bojan. You shall be receiving whichever of those five books you want, so let me know. Really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you have not already and hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Always remember, die reading. All right. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Happy New Year. Talk to you soon. Ciao.